Celestial mechanics is the field of astronomy dealing with the motion of celestial objects. While celestial mechanics has its roots in ancient times, and in particular ancient Greece, the beginning of our modern understanding of it only goes back about 500 years. However, celestial mechanics is the basis of spaceflight, which has really opened up our understanding of the universe. Ptolemy was a Greco-Roman philosopher of Alexandria. He was born in 90 AD, and he died in 168 AD. He was known for his geocentric cosmology. Here is a video animation of Ptolemy's geocentric cosmology. Note that there are only five planets. That's because Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn are the only planets visible to the naked eye. Here is an illustration of the Ptolemaic astronomy basic elements. It involves a planet rotating on an epicycle, which in turn rotates inside of a crystalline sphere that has this Earth slightly off center of that crystalline sphere. Ptolemy saw the stars as being in the outermost crystalline sphere. This system is an excellent example of a philosophy-driven model that needed substantial additional elements to make it fit reality. Nicholas Copernicus was the Renaissance mathematician and astronomer who developed the heliocentric model of the universe. It put the sun at the center rather than the earth. Copernicus was born on February 19, 1473, and he died May 24, 1543. Here is a video animation of Copernicus's heliocentric cosmology. Note that there are only five planets. That is because Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn are the only planets that can be seen with the naked eye. Galileo was an Italian physicist, mathematician, astronomer, and philosopher. He was born on February 15, 1564, and he died January 8, 1642. Galileo was an early champion of heliocentrism. He was the first known astronomer to use a telescope. As a result, he discovered the four largest moons of Jupiter, Callisto, Europa, Ganymede, and Io. Hence, they are referred to as the Galilean moons. The biggest myth about Galileo is about his trouble with the Catholic Church. The myth is that he was per prosecuted for teaching heliocentrism in opposition to the Bible. This myth is false and originated with the 19th century anti-Christian bigots William Draper and Dixon White. They tried to portray it as science versus the Bible. In reality, it was science versus science. Specifically, Ptolemy versus Copernicus, because Ptolemy was seen as an authority by the scientific establishment of Galileo's day. Also, in one of his books, Galileo had made the Pope look like a buffoon, thus belittling the Pope's office and authority. And this was all happening in Italy at the height of the Protestant Reformation. Galileo's first trial was in 1616. The Pope's authority over Europe was falling apart, and Galileo was yet another challenge to his authority. It needs to be noted that the proponents of heliocentrism in Protestant countries, such as Kepler, had no problems from Protestant churches on this issue. Galileo's work helped pave the way for further development. Kepler's discovery that planets orbit the sun in an ellipse, and Newton's development of the concept of gravity. Tuck was born December 14, 1546 and he died October 24, 1601. He is well known for his accurate astronomical and planetary observations. He is also known for his hybrid geocentric heliocentric model. Here is a video illustration of Tycho's hybrid geocentric heliocentric model. Tycho's cosmology was essentially geocentric in that everything ultimately went around the Earth. However, it was part heliocentric in that the other planets were seen as going around the Sun while the Sun went around the Earth. In fact, a modified version of Tycho's model is held to by modern geocentrics. However, despite the fact that heliocentricity is taught as fact in schools, it is not absolutely true. This is because the real answer is that according to general relativity, both geocentricity and heliocentricity can be considered correct. This is because according to general relativity, you can choose any frame of reference you want because they are all valid. However, this does not include only geocentricity and heliocentricity, but Mars centricity, Venus centricity, and even Kepler 62F centricity. It is simply a matter of choosing the most convenient frame of reference. Johannes Kepler was a German astronomer and mathematician. Kepler was born on December 27, 1571, and he died on November 15, 1630. He is best known for his laws of planetary motion. 
Kepler's laws were derived by use of the data collected by Tycho Brain. These laws were for planetary motion around the Sun. However, they apply to dwarf planets, asteroid, moons, and satellite orbits as well. Kepler's first law is that all planets move in elliptical orbits with the Sun at one focus. This was actually a departure from the original idea that planets moved in circular orbits. Kepler's second law is that a line that connects a planet to the Sun sweeps out equal areas in equal times. That is, when the planet is closer to the Sun, it moves faster, and when it is farther away from the Sun, it moves slower. Kepler's third law is that the square of a planet's period is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of its orbit. Isaac Newton was an English physicist and mathematician. He was born on January 4, 1643, and he died on March 31, 1727. Newton is considered one of the most influential scientists of all time. Newton developed the mathematics of calculus, which helped him develop the basic laws of motion. It also helped him develop his most famous work, the law of gravity. All three of these paved the way for a full understanding of celestial mechanics by not just describing how moons and planets move, but why they move the way they do. Order mechanics is the physics that describes the orbits of satellites and planetary bodies. It is ultimately based on Kepler's and Newton's laws. It is used to determine future positions of planets, moons, man-made objects, and any other object in space. Here are the main elements of orbital motion. R is the radius of motion from the center of mass of the gravitating body. G is the gravitational acceleration. V is the velocity of the satellite. And theta is the angle of the velocity to the radius. Planetary motion is a special case of orbital motion. It obeys Kepler's and Newton's laws of motion. However, planets are large enough to have significant gravitational influence on each other. As a result, only some orbits in a planetary system are stable. The main motion of a star as seen from the Earth is called its proper motion. A star's proper motion is the angle the star moves across the sky over time due to its motion relative to the Sun. It is a function of the star's distance and transverse velocity. The radial velocity is found by way of the star's Doppler shift. The transverse and radial velocity combine to give the star's space velocity, which is its actual velocity relative to the sun. The motion of stars relative to each other are essentially random. While gravity between stars does affect this motion, it is small but acts over a long period of time. However, the same main elements apply to stellar motion as does to orbital motion. The same basic laws of physics apply to galactic rotation as does any other orbital motion. However, galaxies are more complex than planetary systems and so exhibit different velocity versus distance curves. The lack of sufficient mass to explain galactic rotation curves has led to the theoretical idea called dark matter. While often considered an exotic form of matter, it could still be some type of undetected normal matter, such as rogue planets. Celestial mechanics is the study of the motion of heavenly bodies. Ultimately, it deals with orbits of one sort or another. However, understanding orbital mechanics is what allows spacecraft to orbit the Earth as well as travel between planets.